Alright, hi everybody. Today I'm going to do a quick tutorial in Resolve 16. Um, and recently I went out and filmed a um, moving time lapse of, um, as you can see here, uh, of, of some nice blossom trees. So um, I think just before we get started, I'll just bring you up to speed with what I've done so far. So essentially I took the uh, raw files um, that I originally started with and I have uh, essentially just flattened the um, the raw files so that everything or a lot of the shot is um, exposed appropriately apart from this bit here which is a little bit highlighted. So in today's tutorial I want to show you how um, easy it is to create a time lapse in Resolve but also um, some really cool features in the color grading page to do masking and things like that which is really beneficial for uh, working with time lapses and hyperlapses and things like that and also just to do your general editing for your filmmaking so um, yeah without further ado let's get started so yeah that's what this is here it's just the JPEGs which I've uh, exported out of uh, Lightroom or uh, you can use other softwares such as RAW um, raw therapy, I think it's called, um, which is a open source Lightroom alternative. Okay, so with our Resolve open, let me just resize this so that everybody can see it. I know my screen is cropped in slightly, um, so we should be able to see near enough everything here. So um, so this is essentially what, what we're going to look at and I've, as I say I've created this very quickly um, and then I'm going to go back and show you how to uh, create this and obviously correct this up here as well. But This is the um, moving time lapse all filmed with the GH5 and the gimbal for the movement. Uh, okay so without further ado let's uh, let's get started. So I'm just going to create a new project and I'll come back to this editing example. Okay, so typically if you're going to um, create a, uh, you know, import your time lapse and start working with it in Resolve, again, when you've opened up Resolve, you'll be dragged over to the timeline viewer like this. And with your media pool um, opened, you want to right click and import media. Now. It's straight away taking me to the JPEG folder. You might need to navigate to your folder in the first instance. Now, when it comes to um, creating time lapses and hyperlapses in Resolve, um, it's as simple as clicking what the first image. Make sure that your images are um, in chronological order. I'm going to select all of them by pressing Control A and then hitting Open. Now, what Resolve does immediately is it puts it into a timeline for us. It, it actually syncs the clips up to make a hyperlapse, a uh, time lapse, should I say, um, which is fantastic. And if I click and open this, um, this is what we get. So yeah, pretty much it's uh, created a, a 24 or 25 frames per second sequence for us. And we can actually check uh, how it is creating that by selecting the clip here and going over to in metadata should I say and yeah so it's converted it to 24 frames per second timeline and at the moment it's a, um, a 5k or close to 5k video uh, because it was captured in raw so what we want to do from this point here um, is create a new timeline and so to do this I've just right clicked timeline to create a new timeline I'm gonna call this rough cuts uh, use custom settings, go to format, and I'm going to change it to 1920 by 1080 and frame rate 24 and hit create. And now I'm going to drag this video here into this timeline. And what we will find is it's put the letterboxes on the side, which is ex exactly how we expect. Now your time lapse or hyperlapse will probably look very similar to this. And there is a bit of a jump in my first initial frames. As you can see here, the first frame, second and third don't quite match up, so I'm just going to uh, scrub to where it's normalized and just get rid of that first bit so that the beginning of this shot plays through like this. 
Selecting the clip on the timeline, I'm then going to go over to Inspector up here, and this is where we can go to the Transform settings and we can zoom in and get rid of those letterboxes, like so. And I can also change the position just to reframe it slightly so that it uh, starts off how I imagined it and envisioned, envisioned it on the day. Now obviously if we were working in a 4K timeline, uh, I wouldn't need to crop in quite so much, so just bear that in mind depending on the workspace and timeline that you're working in, uh, this can be quite beneficial. Okay, so here we go. I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with the timeline so far. This is on the long side with it being 14 seconds, um, and as I say, we could crop that if we wanted to. Now. It was a very windy day, as you can see by the movement of the clouds and also the flickering effect that's happening. Um, if I pause this and go through uh, frame by frame, there's lots of alter um, alterations in my exposure going on. And uh, yeah, we'll address, we'll, we'll try to address some of that later on. Now, even though this was filmed with a gimbal, and which is an electronic movement, with the wind there is still a little bit of jitteriness and um, one feature that's built into Resolve is the stabilization tool. So what we're going to do is, is use DaVinci Resolve stabilization tool and you double click this tool and essentially make sure the mode is set to perspective. You can adjust your cropping ratio which is how much it's going to crop into the image when it's stabilizing. You can adjust the smoothness and leave the strength at one. Again, you can adjust that if you don't want it to be as strong. Once you've got some parameters, you then hit the stabilize button, which I'm not gonna do because I am screen recording as well, which takes up a lot of processing power and it'll take a while, but I have done, have done it on my clip later on. Uh, you'd hit stabilize, it takes a couple of seconds, and then the image is nice and stabilized and nice and fluid. So earlier on, I talked about how um, I didn't do any color grading or uh, color correction in Lightroom. Instead, what I'm going to do is do that here in Resolve. So I've got a flat-ish uh, image, which is consistent throughout the whole uh, throughout the whole video. So we're going to navigate over to the color grading section, the color grading tab, which I believe, if you want a keyboard shortcut for that, is Shift-4. No, shift My bad, I thought it was one of those controlled. You can flick through, if you press Shift 1, for example, it brings up your uh, project window. Shift 2 takes you to the media pool. Shift 3 takes you to clips. Shift 4 takes you to editing. So I assumed Shift 5 is fusion. I assumed Shift 6, oh, it's working. So if you want to jump over to your color grade tab quicker, it's Shift and then the key 6. Okay. So we have our color grading monitor open and we're going to talk very quickly about all this. It can look a little bit intimidating at first, but don't worry, I'm going to explain everything. So up here we have nodes. If you don't see this, nodes is probably turned off, so make sure nodes is turned on. Everything else you can leave as this. You might have your uh, clips on display. Again, it takes up area, so just I always turn those off. And uh, yeah, we're going to get started. So in the bottom corner, you've got waveforms. If you don't see the waveforms, just make sure the waveforms button is selected. We've got some tabs down here we're going to look at, and you've got the power windows and everything here that we're going to look at as well. So what we want to do using the waveform, if you've got any of these others open, just to go over to waveform very quickly. Um, with this waveform, what we want to be really happening here is all of the colors that you see here in the spectrum, we want as close to 1023 and we also want the base as close to zero as possible. So we can see here in the top right corner, this associates with the top right corner of the video, with the image that we're looking at. And that's telling us that we have overexposed areas, which you can see we do. So that is essentially how waveform scopes work. So it's all about balance. Now, working in nodes is fantastic because it's fairly non-destructive and we can do a really cr clean color correction and color grade. Um, and I'm gonna show you some techniques which are um, totally reversible if you don't like them. So, 
First things first, with this node, we're gonna right click it and go to add node and we're adding a serial node. This creates a version two of the first node, if you like. And uh, we could rename it, we'll get into uh, house, good housekeeping in, in future tutorials because I don't want this to be mega long. Uh, okay, so with this second node open, we're going to work with first the lift gamma gain settings. Now, again, you've got some little dots here. Just make sure if you've got this, for example, just tick on, click this little dot here and it'll take you to your primary wheels. So by decreasing the lift, you can see there on the waveform, we want to get close to zero and in the image you can see here that all it's bringing out a lot of contrast. So think of lift a little bit like bringing out uh, the shadows and things like that, making it more contrasty. And I'm just going to reduce the... Uh, in fact, no, I'm going to leave gain as it is, and I'm just going to reduce the gamma very slightly as well. So gamma is again working on your midtones. So now if I click on number two, we can turn this on and off, and you can see essentially what it's doing there. I'm now going to create another serial node and you'll see why in just a moment. Now in this serial node I'm going to uh, increase my colour boost really slightly. So that's down here, setting number two. I'm going to jump over to setting number one. I'm going to increase my saturation a little bit as well. And you'll notice here now we're bumping our colours up a little bit more, so it's making it more colourful. I'm then going to create another serial node. So with this serial node, this is where we're going to get a bit more advanced. I want to sort out uh, this contrast up here to try to get our exposure. There is still some, some data in here. We can see the clouds. We're going to try to normalize that as much as possible to match the opposite side. So to do that, we're going to click on this mask window or this um, window, as it calls itself. And we've got a load of options, presets if you like. If I click on this, it will create... Uh, shape like this which we can move around and you'll notice on this serial node uh, it's masking out everything so whatever I adjust will only be affected the image will only be affected that's within this uh, rectangle uh, so I don't want the rectangle but you can get the gist that would be a circle and etc etc what we are going to work with is this pen tool now the pen tool is handy because it's going to allow me to now draw around the area that I want and for this, I'm just going to make this really rough because uh, I did this with a little bit more care earlier on, which I'm going to revisit. So this is just for speed. So all I'm doing is drawing around the area uh, that I want to adjust. I'm then going to go over and select Fit again. Uh, so at this stage, what I'm going to do is, again, using the settings that we first looked at in this serial node number two, I'm going to reduce the gain slightly reduce the gamma slightly and reduce the lift slightly and as we do it you can see here on the scopes exactly what we're affecting now if I go back over to this uh, button here you can see that it's leaving quite a sharp line so although this is a bit more balanced the line isn't so what we're going to do is going back to this window I'm going to increase the softness and what this should start to do the more you increase it, the better the feathering is going to be between the two. Now, as I said earlier on, I've left uh, there's too much now contrast on the branches here, which we would have to rotoscope around this a little bit more carefully. So, say for example, we can see before and after. So you can see how that is affecting uh, the image, and it's a lot more it's a lot more balanced. Now the problem we have next is when we click space, which plays through, this um, this mask doesn't move. So essentially what we start to do then is affect this whole area. And later on the, the issue isn't as bad. So this isn't great for moving time lapses. It would be fine for time lapses because it's not moving. Uh, the passage of time is moving, but the image isn't moving. However, we've got moving time lapse or even for hyperlapses, um, this can come in handy. So, how do we get around this? What we're going to do is we're going to do some basic tracking. And for this next section, I'm going to open up um, my previous project. So just bear with me two seconds. So this is the Blue Peter moment. Here is one I prepared earlier on. So I'm at the exact same position and point um, as I was earlier on. 
and I've just done a little bit more to this one but as you can see um, I've been a bit more careful around the branches. So what we're going to do is effectively mask this shape. I'm just going to select my power window. So all I did there, um, you can you can choose different qualifiers, a qualifier power window. So you can, it, whatever you're working on in uh, in Resolve, you can uh, sort of assign um, the settings here a bit better. So my power window was turned off, and I wanted that on, just so I can see what I'm tracking. You'll also notice in this section here, I have uh, stabilized the tracking shot, so it looks a lot more fluid. We still have lots of issues with our exposure but because of the, the kind of day that it was um, this is the best we've got to work with. Okay so we're going to go over tracking this. So we want this to essentially follow the tree line uh, up until probably um, I'd say round here and at this point we want this to have disappeared because the exposure isn't as bad for the rest of the shot. Um, so that's all, we're only working in a small area. So to bring up your tracking options just next to your waveform uh, selector we're going to click on this and keyframes in every software are illustrated via this diamond shape um, so again this is transferable skills um, in our diamond shape we're now going to jump over to our um, window our uh, mask window so this is here and essentially we're working in null 3 which is labeled correct to 3 here and we're going to turn on this tracker just like so and it's now enabled in red. Now this is a smart keyframing engine within Resolve so essentially when I start adjusting things it's going to um, recognize that and create keyframes for me. The problem is at that point that you've got to remember to turn this off once you've finished with it otherwise it will start to keyframe you adding corrections and it can get a little bit messy. So just be aware of that. So I've turned on corrector 3 and at the moment there's no keyframes because we haven't told it to do anything. All I'm going to do at this point is just move this around subtly just to tell it at the start I want this power window, uh, this mask should I say, to be here. And now you'll notice a keyframe has popped up. And I'm just going to move the timeline down to here and I'm going to grab this mask and drag it to here. And then at this point I want the mask to be gone and just to make sure it's not overlapping anywhere I'm just going to jump back to 12 and move it a little bit further out. Okay so now you'll see we have our track points and if I go back to the beginning we can see it's doing a good job at following along every now and then that's probably a little bit too far away you can just sort of push it back And keep it in place and you can add more keyframes depending on your preference so again I want this to be nice and quick so that looks fine now if you want to see it without the power window what I like to do is it, well I've got another node here so you can click on another node which will just hide the lines and you can sort of watch it through and see if you can see anything uh, I could also at this point hit P on my keyboard or uh, Control F and that'll bring up full screen and we can sort of see if it's really noticeable. Which, happy to say, it's looking good. So that is essentially how you um, how you work with, with creating this null. Um, and you can sort of see what I've gone for in this as well. I've created a serial node after this. Uh, mask essentially so that I can jump between the power window being on and on and this one off and if I turn this on and off you can see that I've just really uh, darkened it and added a bit more contrast. Now the great thing about serials, serial nodes is we can keep adding them we can also add parallel nodes and, and a parallel node will essentially allow you to work across the same image uh, in parallel to one another and it creates this extra mask node and this is our output over here so parallels are quite useful um, especially if you're working with double you know if you're masking off two things in a scene you can have two parallels it can be quite handy 
Um, so yeah, that's basically uh, basically that. I could also go further than this and then add my own. So this, is, if we call this my color correction, um, I could then go into doing some more grading. And again, grading is all to your preference. Um, and yeah, you essentially just tweak it to however you like it. So if I was to do something like this, just to finish it all off, we have a finished output that looks like this. So say for example, I'm happy with this grade um, and I want to re-speed uh, re this. Well, we're coming to the end of the video now, so this, that's it. That's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. This next bit is just a kind of a, a quick one if you're not happy with the speed. A nice powerful feature in Resolve, if I just right click this and go to Retime Controls and turn those on. And I'll also turn on the Retime Curve. What I can do at this point is by clicking on this little, uh, you can't really see it very well um, through the video, but there's a little down arrow here and I can change the speed of this to 200%. And essentially that's gonna make it 100% quicker. Um, so it's adding more speed to the time-lapse and we get something like that. We can also then fade in and fade out and yeah, have a good time. So, um, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you found that helpful for creating time lapses and hyperlapses in DaVinci Resolve. As I say, it is really quick um, and I especially like the fact that um, it creates it in its own little video file and then you can adjust your timeline and add it into it. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching.